From Studio 5 in New York City, this is the News at 6. Okay, we welcome you back, and now to tonight's feature story, The Battle Over City Bike. The program is still only a couple of years old, and while it's faced its share of problems in that time, it's popular enough to expand at a pretty good pace. But as Antoine Lewis shows us now, that's a problem for some people. Watch. Taking a bike ride in New York may get a little easier if you don't own your own bike. City Bike has just announced plans to expand its service. We're looking at neighborhoods that have a decent amount of density for housing and for businesses both because you know that you're going to get a good number of trips that way. You've got people who are going from home to work, you've got people who are going from work to home, you've got people who are going from home to buy a gallon of milk or to meet a friend for dinner. Um, there's lots of different reasons to take trips when you have that kind of density. City Bike's growth here in its few short years has surprised many. Still, it hasn't received the warmest reception. The way I see it, City Bike essentially started rolling over people all over this city. Stephen Slack is a Manhattan-based attorney. Slack is represents a group who filed suit to have the City Bike racks removed from in front of New York's historic Plaza Hotel on West 58th and 5th. It's almost like putting a mustache on the Mona Lisa. It's a bright blue and white bike rack right in front of a beautiful historic building. Why do that when it could just simply be put around the corner? It's not even a NIMBY issue. It's put it in my side yard. Put it in my backyard. Just don't put it right in front where people are taking pictures, uh, um, postcard quality, and it gets marred by these bike racks. Among other complaints, city bike stations further congest New York City vehicle and foot traffic. Still others say the bikes do offer a convenience. You could grab a bike and just go to where you need to go to uh, faster than sometimes taking a subway. I live in a studio, so I don't have enough space to have my own bike. So every time I walk past, I want to I want to do it, but it's like I'm already here. You know, I don't have anywhere to go once I'm in the city. So if they had it out in Astoria, I would definitely be coming in and out every day. City Bike hopes to double in size by 2017, going further in Brooklyn and for the first time going to Queens. Ernie, back inside to you. Antoine, thank you very much for that. Joining me right now, my special guest today, this is City Council Member Ben Kalis from District 5. Ben, nice to have you here. Thank you for having me. Long well, time we, watcher. Yeah, well, thank you. We appreciate that. Nice to have you on our program. You know, we've been talking about this right now. You just saw Antoine's story. Uh, the program has gone through a little overhaul work. Tell us about that and how successful it is. Absolutely. So since 2013, when it launched, we've had over 19 million trips and wow. only 10 and a half collisions for every million trips. Uh, in the next couple of years, we're looking to see the entire system double uh, to 12,000 bikes from the current 6,000. That's tremendous expansion. Do you, do you anticipate any problems, safety issues and things of that nature? With a million trips for every 10 and a half collisions, mm -hmm. uh, city bike riders are actually some of the safest riders out there. And in fact, we've seen a traffic calming effect mm -hmm. with the bikes. They're really heavy. It's hard to go fast. So they tend to slow other bicyclists down. Ben, as you know, there have been a lot of critics who say, you know what, don't put these bike stations in certain locations, like in front of the plaza, for example, uh, mm -hmm. landmark areas. There's a lot of congestion. Uh, how do you feel about, you know, input from the community as far as these decisions go? It's essential. Uh, the city works for the people. Mm -hmm. As soon as we knew that we were going to be expanding City Bike, we worked with DOT. We had numerous meetings of the community. We sent an email to everyone we could, letting them know about what the maps were. And we started working with building by building, trying to move station to places where they would actually be better. We heard a lot of people complaining oh. about losing parking. So we're trying to move as many of the stations onto sidewalks where they won't affect parking. So either. you're hearing feedback and you're responding to it. Absolutely. We've actually already moved two stations based on community feedback. What do you expect 10, 15 years down the road? How is this whole program going to play out? So we'll have a lot more vehicles. We'll right. have a comprehensive infrastructure for bikes. You'll be able to pick up a bike, bike wherever you need to throughout the city. And it will be just another form of public mm -hmm. transportation, which means people will have an easier commute. Ben, I know you hear this. People say as long as the weather is good, you know, the bikes are okay. But when we have a short season and then you have difficulties, uh, you know, perhaps it creates other issues. It's, it's getting warmer, and uh, even in the winter, there are still times where you may need to get somewhere a little bit quicker, and we'll have city bike locations all over the city. You'll mm -hmm. be able to hop on the bike, get cross town, which is always hard to do, and uh, hopefully it'll be convenient for everyone all the time. Happy, safe riding for everybody. Ben Kalis, thank you so much for joining us tonight. My pleasure. Good thank information. You. Thank you. Good to have you here.